today I'm going to recap the Jim Thorpe Award banquet as well as have conversations with Jim Thorpe Award winners Antonio Langham, Minka Fitzpatrick, and the 2018 winner DeAndre Baker. And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I'm going to recap the Jim Thorpe Award banquet, which was held the night before signing day at the National Cowboy Western Heritage Museum. Wow. Sincerely an awesome event. And I... Got an invitation from my buddy David, who is also on the selection committee for the Jim Thorpe Award. Cool thing about that, the folks that get these pins right here, I'm going to turn this one up there, it says Jim Thorpe on it right there, they're on the committee or they won the award. And I got a pin, which is really humbling. And I continue to take this so terribly seriously and it's awesome and it's amazing and it's all happening because you watch the channel. I appreciate it. All of this and that's one of the reasons I wanted to recap this with you first I had to buy a tuxedo which if some of y'all know is kind of that thing where you're an adult now you know if you're not buying one for a wedding or, or just have one in your closet I'm I'm 31 finally an adult so I got to wear that took Laurel with me and she had a good time I, look I'm gonna slow down and start from the beginning and just say from jump from the moment that I got to sit down with these guys to have conversations about football, about what this award represents, which is great defensive back play. The best defensive back in the country for that year. And of course, character is what allows you to win this award because you cannot be a bad dude and win this award. I keep trying to tell kids that. And that's one of the conversations that we need to continue to have about the sport is how character is important to being a good college football player. But among other things, there's just a who's who. I mean, we had George Nye in the house. Glenn Schumann, linebacker's coach at Georgia, showed up to give an outstanding speech on behalf of DeAndre Baker. Roy Williams was in the house. He's won the Jim Thorpe Award. I think I saw Donovan Woods out there. And there's senators and there were judges. And I got to meet all kinds of different people. Also, shout out to Sister Hands. He showed up. Got to talk with him for a little bit. But what I want you to take away from this event is that it is the biggest thing going on in the state when we're talking about awards banquets. I mean, it's on par with the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame annual induction. It's that big a deal. And I was able to share it with Laurel, with David, got to talk to some people I haven't got to talk to in a very long time. And more to the point, I was just flabbergasted by just how big this is. You know, you have the Allstate kids that show up, got to see Savion Morris get announced as an Allstate member. I Man, Broken Arrow is stacked. Just look at all the Allstate kids. Also, the 2020 class in Oklahoma is legit because most of the kids that were up there, they're from the 2020 class, man. It was kind of awesome. But what was more awesome, and one of the cool things about being on this committee is I get to talk to these guys for the channel. And now I want to get into those interviews where I got to speak with DeAndre Baker, Minta Fitzpatrick, and Antonio Langham. I asked them some really what I thought were cool questions. We'll see if you think they're cool questions. Also, I apologize for the large microphone that is in the shot with Antonio Langham. I just was kind of starstruck, and I was dapping it up, and I was having a good time. You'll see. I'm having a really good time. But let's just get into the interviews. Starting with Minka Fitzpatrick. I'm here with Minka Fitzpatrick. You look sharp, dog. Appreciate it. Appreciate Yo, can, can you fix me up? No, you good. You straight. I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> my... I look I look all right to you. You're good. You're Yo good. man, thanks for being here, number one. Number two, I was asking you about it off camera. How was your first year? It was a, it was a good year. Um, I think I definitely learned a lot, had fun. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, it was it had ups and downs uh, personally, but it's what the rookie season is all about. It's about growing, it's about fighting through those downs and uh, just keep doing what you're doing when you're up. Uh, constantly learning, constantly growing and just applying what you learned this year mm. and uh, using it for next year. So. What were you doing during the national championship game? Mm. What were so you doing? I was at my, I was in Alabama. I was with my girlfriend and her family watching the game uh, at their house. <laughs> Throughout the whole game, I was just, I was just frustrated. Everybody seen us frustrated. Everybody was like, I don't know if we should keep watching the game. Like Minka is mad. I couldn't sit still. Minka was mad. Like, what was Minka yeah. mad about? Man, it just, it just, it just wasn't a good game. I don't like any time Bam was losing or any time Bam was down, but. You know, I, I went into halftime. I was like, all right, we good. We're going to make some plays. 
It just, it just didn't happen. And, you know, Clemson, they're a great team. They did a really good job preparing. Uh, you can tell they just wanted it, and, you know, it is what it is. Did Tua ever go against you? Tua in practice? Yeah. yeah, yeah did you yeah. pick him off? I did. I have before. Oh, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to give give the people away some, nah, some tendencies nah, or whatnot nah, we need? I can't do that. I can't do that. Oh, <laughs> man. Well, hey, tell me about this event, what it means to you. You came back, on obviously, yeah, right, after yeah. having won it, so it's not a one-off for you. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a great event. You know, Oklahoma City is a, is a great city. Uh, Mike and everybody else, they do a great job hosting the families and, and myself. And, you know, last year they just uh, were, they made you, just made you feel real comfortable. Uh, they, they made sure we had, we had fun, we had everything we needed. Um, they're being real authentic. And I think that's really important, especially throughout this whole process, uh, especially during like where DeAndre is at right now. You have a whole bunch of people being fake and being this and that, but they're real authentic. They really cared about you. Uh, they, uh, they cared about your family, which is also important. And they just do a really good job of organizing things. And you know, they chose me last year to win the award, so I definitely have to show my respect and show up when, when they want me to show up. And uh, you know, like I said, just have a whole lot of fun. They do a great job, and it's a real good event. All right, cool. Give me one piece of advice for high school DBs, one piece. High school DBs, um, I would say do things, I could give a lot of advice, but one thing I'll say is just do the things that nobody else is willing to do. Hmm. You know, whether that be um, if you're on a, a team full of five stars or in a team full of nobody, um, just find a way to be different, you know what I'm saying, in, in a good way. To find, to find a way to uh, separate yourself from everybody else, whether it be you know, if you're all working out together, uh, you just go home and, and do a little bit extra. You might watch the, watch the extra little bit of film. You know, it's all cool and, and good to do everything with your boys and, and hang out with your boys, work out with your boys. But you know, at the end of the day, somebody got to be on top, you know. And somebody has to be uh, that, that alpha dog. Somebody has to be that guy that separates from the pack. You're all, you aren't all going to be in the same circle, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I think it's just good to just always try to do the things to separate yourself. Uh, they'll just put you a little bit ahead of the game. All right, Minka Fitzpatrick, thank you so much, dude. Yes, I appreciate, appreciate you. you. Have fun tonight. Yes, sir. All right, man. Thank you. Minka, smart, articulate, really a great stand-up guy, and really I'm proud that he's the 2017 winner of this award. Now let's talk to the 1993 winner of this award, Antonio Langham, who also went to Alabama, and man, was he a riot. Give it a listen. Tell me something good, man. All right, hey, well, first, I come in here, I'm driving down, okay. right? I'm driving down in my Black Panther hoodie and my J's <laughs> and my jeans, and I get here and I gotta get dressed in this tuxedo. You're looking good, uh, baby, uh, I'm telling uh, you. Okay, all right. Looking real See, good, you, you, got, you got your Rick Ross flowing right, right there. See, Right, right, right. You got your Rick Ross, and I got going. the ponytail you going up, yeah. so I feel real good. You're feeling good. And then I got to put on these things called cufflinks. Oh, that just that, that brought your grown man out then. It, why it take me half an hour to put these cufflinks <laughs> on, man? You can't say you can. If it take you that long, you ain't ready for your grown man. All right, man. man look, look. Hey, this is this. I'm feeling real good you got with it. this three piece. You know, it, I, but but I gotta dress up for y'all. If, 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 you, if you look good, you feel good. Oh, well, that's what they tell And when you feel good, you play good. Is that, is that, was that how you went out? That's how it went out. Okay, so. With DBs, we have to make sure we look good. If we don't, if we don't look good, okay. we don't feel good. If we don't feel good, we don't play good. So, so tell me about being on 11 as a DB. Because I always say that you got to be cranked to 11 because you have to have a short-term memory. And y'all play the hardest position on the field. Somebody finally says that. <laughs> finally. They always want to say his quarterback is a harder position on the field. Well, I don't know why they always say that. Because he knows where everybody is going. We don't. We got to figure out where his guys are going. Okay. All right. So, in figuring out where other folks are going, I'm going to talk a little. Let's go. Okay. Would you want to be on top of somebody? Or you want to do that cover three off where you look in and you got eyes on number one, number two, and the quarterback? No, I, I'd rather play press man. Okay. So I can I can I can end this at the line of scrimmage. If I get my hands on him, he's dead. Every <laughs> offensive play is 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 timed. It's, it's probably a six second play. Right. So if the quarterback looks over there, his number one guy is over there fighting with me. Oh, he's dead. So okay. I'm good. Okay. Now he had to deal with his second read and the third read and the fourth read, which is usually the dump off to the running back, the fourth read is. Okay, so was was that how you got picks? Was you just disrupt, disrupted the line of scrimmage and then you went looking for the ball? Or did you make a play on the ball when it's in the air? Well, you make a play on the ball when it's in the air. Okay. A lot of mine came with in the air when the ball is in the air, making okay. a play on the ball in the air. Okay. And then, then sometimes you get a lucky one. Okay. Get thrown to you. Just haven't been in the right place at the right time. Okay. I'm going to ask you, who was the toughest wide receiver you ever had to cover? 
Jerry Rice. When? I played against Jerry Rice in 90. Five, I was with uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. We went and played them, and I actually uh, got an interception off of Jerry on a post route. I intercepted one. Who threw it? Uh, I think Steve was throwing was throwing then. Steve Young, and then that happens. Then the following year, I'm playing with Jerry. So now I got to go against him every day in practice. Him and Steve Young every day in practice. But man, I loved it, man. Steve Young and, and Jerry Rice, man, were great. And Jerry and I did a lot of work after practice, man. He, and eight them, those are eight one guys, man. Jerry and, and Steve Young. Man. Well, I'm gonna ask you what I asked Minka. Give me one piece of advice for high school DBs. You know. The great Maya, Maya Angelou said, all great achievements re require time. So what I tell, I, and I coach high school football right now, so what I tell the young kids is, don't look for the end results in the right now if you're not willing to work to get the end results. Hmm. So that falls in line with what Link Minka was saying, do the things other folks are unwilling to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Tony Langham, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you. I'm going to be mingling. I'm probably going to be coming up to you asking you if I'm all right. Oh, you, you, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Just got your time. You, look, 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 you got me. There you go, baby. You now me. you're good. I appreciate you. You're welcome, I baby. Appreciate <laughs> you. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. And finally, the 2018 award winner from the University of Georgia, the first player in Georgia football history to win the award, DeAndre Baker. If you don't remember anything else about DeAndre Baker, I want you to remember two things. One. He gave up all of one touchdown in his career as a cornerback at Georgia, and that was in the Liberty Bowl against TCU. So he's basically been two years without giving up a touchdown. Number two, he ran track in high school, and he's telling folks, as you'll see, football players, run track. I made a bunch of videos about this, and now you got the Jim Thorpe Award winner, the best DB in the country, saying you should run track if you're not high school defensive back. Let's give it a listen. Look at Fresh. Yeah. With the red and black of Georgia, I see you with the Georgia pin, with that. Mm -hmm. How you feeling? How's this? How's this weekend been? Been a long week, but you know I'm just blessed to be here. It's been a good week. Been showing good hospitality out here in Oklahoma. No straight. What's the coolest thing you got to do? Probably when they got them cowboy boots with the. Uh, oh yeah. With the, uh, they cowboy. take you to Langston. Oh yeah. What did you think walking through there? It was crazy. <laughs> what kind of boots you get? It's like some wildebeest skin, black and red. Yeah. What? Yeah. You why you ain't wearing them? No, I had to just keep it simple. Oh, no, I hear you. I hear you. No, so, like, one of the things that was cool about watching you play is seeing how you can go all over the field, right? You don't just play boundary. You don't just play field. You were wherever they needed you to be. Yeah. How do you get so comfortable being so versatile as a defensive back? Because that's what you are. You're a defensive back rather than a corner, rather than a safety, rather than a nickel. Just wherever you need to play. It just, you know... Just working on it in practice, being able to be versatile in practice, and you know, going against good guys in practice, then it carry over in the game. You know, I don't really have a side that I'm better on. I can, I can play both sides, so it don't really matter where I'm at on the field, as long as I'm on the field. So, that mentality, I gotta believe, comes with how you got to Georgia in the first place, because we're talking about. You know, I work at a recruiting service, so five stars or four stars and whatnot. You were none of that. Oh no. So, so what does that do to your psyche when you get to a place like Georgia? Just what I've been doing, just proving myself. That's all I got to do. I ain't had no problem with doing that. So I just had to get it from the ground up, get out the mud. So I asked Antonio Langham, I asked Minka Fitzpatrick, I'm going to ask you, what advice, just one piece of advice, would you give to a high school defensive back? Mm, I'd probably say run track. Run track? Yeah. That, okay, that, speak that on help, that. That'll help you with your uh, long speed, you know. Speed is a defensive back. Help everybody. So, would you run? I ran 200. And tried, yeah. Would you? Would you drop? 21 something. I don't it was 21 something. I don't really remember. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 55, 400 meter dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm a dude. It's slow. Wait, yeah, I'm yeah, just, I'm straight, just, yeah. Nah, nah. But like that's that's real because I talk to kids all the time about mm -hmm. what are you doing outside of football to help yourself. Yeah. Right. And now we have evidence to show that track and field really does help you not just with your skills but also land that scholarship that you want. Definitely. So now you're getting ready, I assume, going to the combine? Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay. Uh, what has your process been like post-Georgia to try to get your mind right for the NFL combine? There's no training on my 40, you know, DB drills. It's the, you know, normal drills that you do at a combine, just training and eating right, getting ready for the next level. Now I'm going to ask you a little bit of a tough question. What were you doing during the Sugar Bowl? During the Sugar Bowl, I was just dealt with my team just yeah. out there. 
coaching the young guys, okay. just being there, just front of mental support, even though I ain't play, I was just out there with my team. So how did your mindset change for that when you know you're just out there to coach them up? You know, I just had to be like more vocal, that's all. Instead of just, I'm, no, I'm more of a guy like who just show by example, but I had to be more vocal then, so just switched it up. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you didn't get a chance to say? Uh, that's, you, you got you hit every point. Okay. Oh, that's what's up. DeAndre Baker, 2018 Jim Thorpe Award winner, the mm -hmm. best defensive back in the country. The Thank best. you so much, sir. All right, that's it for me. Shout out to Paycom and the Jim Thorpe Award, the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, David Patrick, Mike James, Olivia James, and all the folks that I got to meet, and I'm so happy to be a part of this committee, and I look forward to contributing in the future. I will see you tomorrow. Deuces.